Morning everybody, Rusty from the Rusty Razor got another shave day and today we're going to do a Barbus. Yes, interesting scent, nice clean, rich uh, citrus scent. Kind of uh, citronella, is the best way to describe it. I like it, it smells good. And then we're going to be using the first use of the Gillette Wilkinson Sword Blades with the Mercor 34C. Yes, nice little combination to go together, blue. And then we're going to follow up with some Barbus Aftershave Lotion. This one is a Prestige. It smells good. I like it. Yeah. It smells good. To my nose, it does. I had a choice I was going to go with this one or the other Barbus product. This one here from Slovakia. This one's similar scent as the, uh, the, the soap itself, but... The, the Prestige has just a little bit extra that I just like, so I'm going to use that today. Okay, all right, how's your day going? Mine's not too bad, just up and about today. Oh, sitting there, it's like it's been a slow day. You get up and you're sitting there, did a little bit of puttering around. Broke out the old ham radio, did a little bit of talking on the radio this morning. Don't know why, it's just like, about like it. And then I realized, oh, I gotta eat some breakfast. I ate my breakfast, a bagel. Yeah, just a bagel. And then I'm sitting there, just tooling around. It's like, an, it's like a, as crappy as Facebook is, I don't actually really look at the feeds anymore of what's going on. Uh... I seem to find the science videos, what's going on, or the mystery thing. I think, did I sh save it? Yeah, I, I did share it in the last one, uh, Mr. Ballin. That was his name, Mr. Ballin. And about his stories. I always find it just fascinating listening to his, his stories. are about 12, 15 minutes long talking about stuff. But today was like, um, they were talking about the Carrington event. So, quiz! Who knows about the Carrington event? Let me know. I'll just put it down below. I'll talk about it here in a second. But First pass with the grain. Oh, it's sharp. I can feel it. Barbus is a nice little soap. I like it. Big dude Barbus. You can pick this stuff up. It's not expensive. Gets the job done. Got a nice scent. And you're asking, why are you going so many different directions on your lower? But because my everything swirls down here, so it doesn't matter what direction I go. So that's why I always do that. Like I'm always catching this way, this way, or up this way is with the grain, or against the grain, or across the grain. Doesn't matter. All at the same time. So that's why I do it. Map your face. That's what I say. Know how your hair grows. And what's most efficient for you. The only place is right here. Is right strip right through here. Is a normal. Like straight down like everybody else. But that's the only place on my neck that it's like that. Like here, my this goes like this up this way. <laughs> and I don't have any hair right here. There's none. Zero. Like the, uh, both my, two of my brothers got goatees going on now. They always seem to grow a goatee during snowmobile season. And then it takes them a while to get rid of it if they do get rid of them. And they keep asking, why don't you grow one? Cause I hate fur, okay? And like, what? I was like, I can't stand having hair on my face. This ugh. It's right nuts. So every time I shave, I'm always trying to get every little bit of it gone. Cause if I find a little bit on it, it drives me nuts all day. Cause I'll know it's there. But. So yeah, uh, there is a affiliate link down below. 
to the razor company so if you go to the razor company click on the affiliate link you get something we get a little bit of kickback that will go towards giveaway I don't keep it it goes for you guys and we recently passed 450 yay thank you everybody all the new subscribers all of you that are new thank you very much appreciate it we're getting there we're counting them down it's like we're half almost halfway there <laughs> to the thousand which i figure by the time i make it to a thousand they'll change it to where you have to have 1500 or 2000 subscribers you know you know get that magical monetation so add many factors of that you gotta have uh, so many subscribers so many views Every video I have has at least, I think about 120 to 150 views of, per uh, video. So, yeah, it adds up. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Carrington event. If it happened today, would be a massive disaster for the world. Except if you live in places like Africa or <laughs> it's like uh, a lot of third world countries like uh, Russia, China, um, India, you know, places like that that don't have a lot of infrastructure yet for when it comes to technology. Even though you look in some of the big countries, like you look at Russia and it's like you look in... Uh, they're major uh, metropolitan areas. Yeah, they're just like everywhere else. They're just like Western countries, highly technological. But you get into the rural areas where they're just like, <laughs> there's some places they're lucky they have power, you know? You know, they're still trying to get over their Marxism. Well, it, it's hard to say if they're still communists or not in Russia. Uh, technically, they're not, but, you know, totalitarian, authoritarian state. Yeah, okay. A little bit of politics there, but... Uh, Carrington event was a result of a solar flare that just impacted us directly. See, most of the time, we have solar flares flat. So solar flares. God, I can't even talk today. Uh, they hit our planet, and you see them in the form of uh, um, northern lights. Aurora Borealis is the uh, solar particles impact on our planet hit the magnetosphere, and that energy is transferred and ionizes. Uh, the gases of our planet as it goes over the magnetic uh, poles of north and south and it runs down, follows the magnetic lines through and you get the northern lights which, you know, here in Iowa we can see the northern lights when you get a pretty decent storm you can see the northern lights there's so many people here in the state like what? You can see the Northern Lights in Iowa? Like, I thought that was only in like Alaska and Canada. No. In the uh, Carrington event, it was a mass. We got hit directly from a solar flare. It just massive, heavy duty solar flare hit the planet. And they had. Uh, they can see the northern lights down in Florida and Texas, you know, those places. That far south. That's how strong it was. And this happened in, what, 18... Was it 1860 something? It was like during that time. Or was it 58? I can't. A little something like that. Where 
Uh, we, all we had for technology was telegraphs. So we had telegraph lines in places. Now that was your high tech thing where you just like send Morse code over the lines. And the blare was so strong that uh, operators did not even need batteries to send the signal. So they, uh, everything was energized and they could just send signals down the lines free of charge. In some places, the telegraph lines caught fire or actually glowing. That's like a light bulb. Because that was how much energy was impacting on the planet during that time. I'll try to remember to put the exact day on it. There was a uh, scientist, was it, was it named Miyake, I think? They call it now the Miyake events, where she was taking uh, samples of trees and core samples and was able to uh, look at the um, radioactive carbon dating and see in some of these years there was the equivalent of a Carrington event, but a ma more massive scale. That was like three or four times more powerful than the Carrington event. So you're talking uh, a massive solar flare or a battery of them. Because sometimes think of the, uh, the sun as having like whirlpools on it. And the uh, a solar flare or a... Um, spot that you see a solar spot you see if you ever look at a picture maybe I'll try to remember I got some pictures of my own that I've taken but you'll see the spots on the, on the sun and those can be spots where they send out eject out uh, material and they th theorize that these Miyake events were like massive, like you could have a group of them all together and it's like, instead of having one uh, solar flare, you got a group of them, let's say two or three or four send out a flare and they're all in the same direction and they aim right for the planet and they hit us directly. Instead of a glancing, they just all smack into us. It's like the perfect storm type thing where we just get hammered. And if it happened today, we would lose all technology that isn't protected by a uh, Faraday cage. Now, and you're asked, what's a Faraday cage? Well, it is a um, like a wire cage, like a chicken fence, but narrow, smaller uh, wire that surrounds you or your object or something, and signal can't get in because it hits the cage and it and it's grounded and it will. Uh, ground any energy that comes in and you'll uh, protect what your devices are and stuff. I sort of have something similar to that I made myself. I got these uh, 20 millimeter ammo cans I got in the army. I got, uh, how many is it, one, two, three of them? And one of them I got foam inside which I can put my uh, uh, ham radio equipment into and it's got uh, where I have attached wire then and, and I have it grounded to the, the concrete in my basement 
so I can store all my radio equipment. I got it where I can throw in a, you know, I had a, for the laptop, throw the laptop in there. Shouldn't think about making a, a larger one feel like the desktop. Throw your phones in. He's like, you know what's going to happen. Throw your phones in. Your laptop, my ham equipment, you know, my radios. And when it hits, all that stuff is protected from the energy output that will fry their circuits. Now, you probably will, it's like outside your cars and trucks will all be fried so you won't be able to get anywhere. Unless you have, it's like my 60, uh, nine cougar if it was running at the moment which is not because i need to replace the uh, fuel lines on it fuel tank if it was running i just would fire right up because it, it's low enough tech that you know doesn't have a cpu or anything it's just analog uh push carburetor type thing got spark plugs in it but that's not going to be an issue for it so, and the, uh, you know, stuff like that, low tech equipment will still be operational. But in an event like this, you probably will lose every single vehicle, your motorcycles, unless they're low tech carbureted without any uh, electronics on board. You know, it'll be fine, but you would say, uh, the potential of fires happening where you know, power lines will catch on fire or get so hot, glow like, uh, uh Light bulbs, incandescent. Houses might catch on fire. All electronics, you won't have your phone, cell towers are gone. We'll go right back to the 1800s, 1850. <laughs> so... Civilization will crash. So just think, all those major cities, like say New York, LA, uh, London, you know, you name it, across the world, China, you know, all those major cities, the entire infrastructure crashes where you have no ability to get food to them. And they start starving, they get hungry, they start eating each other. <laughs> hey, my neighbor down there, he's a little slow and he's big. Mmm, let's put him on the Barbie type of thing, yeah. Law and order is gone. You look at, in a blackout, let's say New York City, how quickly, within hours of a blackout, they're, they're burning the place to the ground. Now just think about weeks and months. or years without and it can happen at any time and we're coming when the wonderful thing is, is we got another solar cycle ramping up so we went, came out of a solar minimum that uh, helped cool the planet a bit but now we're going into another solar maximum, which helps heat the planet. Oh yeah, you sure I didn't know that either. But the sun is a major driver of our temperature of our planet. And when you get into a solar maximum, you get more solar output, which helps heat up our planet. And you're, it's like some people are like, man, we had such a cold winter here recently. That's because we 
we're at the tail end of a solar minimum, so things start cooling off. Yeah, so it's an 11-year cycle. So in the last solar maximum we had, I could take my 5-watt uh, handheld uh, ham radio and I was talking with people on 6 meters over in Europe with 5 watts. That's how good it was. And it was like, hey, where you at? Oh, I'm over here in England. It's like, hey, I'm in, oh, talking over here in Iowa. And they go, you're kidding me. Nope. <laughs> So you're talking with somebody that's over there on uh, five watts of radio, just a little handheld, a little sucker. I remember back in the 70s when we had a, uh, whoa, hello, that came out a lot. Um, solar maximum in the 70s, I had my little C handheld uh, CB radio. And I was talking with people, and you know, I was living in Minnesota at the time, and I, was, I could easily, with Wolf, uh, I think it, their one watt uh, output. And I was talking with individuals in uh, California with no problem. And I could pick up signals of elsewhere, you know, just listening, people talk. And that was Barbus uh, Prestige. Oh, that's a nice scent. have to remember the restrictor is not really restrictive he's like whoa that just came out big time Ooh. all right smells good all right that's the shave of the day everybody brought to you by barbas wonderful scent really like the scent of this stuff and then we had the gillette wilkinson sword blades with the mercor 34c first use Excellent little usage, and I was followed up with the Barbus Prestige. Oh, yeah. And I got Barbus all over the thing. All right. So that's the shave there, buddy. Hope you guys like it. Like and subscribe, share with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one. Rusty out.